Hi, I'm Nina Jamal. I'm with Indie Act, the League of Independent Activists, and I come from Lebanon. Okay, and we heard you talking a lot about uh, ambition here, getting a legally binding deal that actually means something. Uh, what do you mean by that? Um, I mean that legally binding, so Kyoto and a legally binding agreement is not enough. We need to fill it up with ambition. We need to fill it up with action that will actually save the climate. We need countries to start putting plans. How are they going to reduce emissions? How are they going to stay below uh, 2 degrees or even 1.5, which is a target that more than 100 countries are calling for? So the target is 2 degrees, and countries have made pledges to get towards that, that target, to keep their emissions low enough so they stay below 2 degrees warming globally. Uh, are those pledges good enough? They are by far, by far not enough. So there's an interesting UNEP report about the emissions gap. And what it said, what it said was that there's a huge gap between what is needed and where we need to be. There's 6 to 11 gigatons of CO2 equivalent that we need to reduce before 2020 if we want to stay below a 2 degree pathway. And how many gigatons of carbon are in the air right now? Is 6 to 11 gigatons a lot? It's, it's a massive amount. I, I, wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be able to explain it in a quantifiable manner, unfortunately, but, but it's, it's a huge amount. For, so, for example, just, just to give you some percentages, developed countries were um, advised by the, UNF, by the um, AR5, they are for the fourth assessment of the IPCC, that they need to reduce their emissions between 25 to 40 percent by 2020, and they're currently at 12 to 18 percent. And this amount of gigatons that's, that's in the air that we need to reduce has a lot of, um, it will require a lot of action and what, what countries are doing, so for example with all the loopholes, all this uh, cheating in a way about the numbers of, um, so the emissions that they're trying to reduce. So let's, let's talk about those loopholes. Um, so you've said they've, they've currently pledged to reduce 12 to 18 percent, but there, there are loopholes within that. So when you take into account all these loopholes, does that mean their pledges are actually lower than 12 to 18, or is that including the loopholes? Yeah, their, um, their targets will mean close to nothing if the current rules on the table actually pass. What the loopholes are, um, are related, for example, to pollution permits. They're also called assigned amount units. Uh, which were permits that were given uh, to countries within the Kyoto Protocol to allow them to, re to pollute, but those permits were being reduced year by year. However, uh, when they got those permits and with the economic crisis and other situations, they ended up having too many pollution permits. And now what many countries want to do, most of them in uh, Eastern Europe, is they want to take all those permits and take them to a second commitment period of the Kyoto, allowing them to pollute even further and even reduce, uh, even increase their emissions. Okay, and you mentioned also uh, a problem with double counting of, of emissions reductions? Yes, um, double counting of emissions reductions uh, is linked to um, offsetting emissions, so developed countries, uh, when they want to reduce their emissions, they sometimes reduce them in their countries, they sometimes reduce them in developing countries and the question is if they're going to reduce them in developing countries will those emissions reductions be counted for developed countries or for developing countries and the problem is there is nothing there's no clarity in the legal text that says okay they're going to be counted for developed and not developing so what will end up happening is both countries are going to claim we reduce these emissions and we're not going to have an accurate account of, of how much reductions has been happening. But don't we have the best lawyers in the world here working on this? How is all this happening? Well, to be honest, I think it's largely linked to, it's not linked to uh, lawyers. It's more linked to countries' willingness to act. It's linked to countries waiting for each other to act. And it's linked to countries not realizing the true benefit of climate action when they reduce their emissions, when they invest in energy efficiency, they're actually reducing costs. When they're investing in renewables, they're actually saving money uh, on, that they're spending on increasing oil prices. So countries need to reassess what is really beneficial for them and start moving down that pathway. Is there movement here at these negotiations to close these loopholes? Well, um, there, there are options on the table that could help, for example, with uh, forest loopholes, you know, um, when countries um, cut, less, uh, cut more trees or less trees, there are more or less emissions. And 
what these countries want to do is they want to um, play with the formulas, how they calculate, how much emissions are coming out. And there are, for example, proposals on the table um, that would say uh, you can only get uh, credits, so you only get credit for emissions reductions if you're not really hiding any emissions. And, and this is the direction that we need to head to. There are options on the table. Countries just need to grab them. Are there countries that are blocking uh, these changes? Well, um, there are countries that are uh, blocking the general uh, movement towards ambition. For example, the U.S. does not want to have a discussion about increasing ambition uh, before uh, 2013. So they don't want to have any talks about this during th the course of the next year. Uh, China um, wants to move the discussion on how we're going to close the emissions gap into um, an overarching discussion in the negotiations and the shared vision discussions. That will mean that um, there will be no operational decisions if, if, they, if they actually manage to do that. There are countries that are moving forward that are taking action but um, it's still not um, enough. So what we want from countries is we want them to to take the good elements that they're working with, so um, identifying how big the emissions gap is, identifying ways to close it, coming up with a work program for next year with deadlines uh, about how they're going to make these reductions, and we want them to have a discussion about how they're going to reduce uh, those emissions. Great. Thank you, Nina. Sure. Thanks.